My name is Dr. Jan Hillert. I'm a MS neurologist and a professor of neurology at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden. My name is Scott Montgomery. I'm a clinical epidemiologist and professor of medical science at Örebro University and director of the clinical epidemiology group at Örebro University Hospital in Sweden. We're going to discuss a paper published in the journal Therapeutic Advances in Neurological Disorders entitled Pregnancy Outcomes After Exposure to Interferon Beta, a register-based cohort study among women with MS in Finland and Sweden. We will consider how the findings from this study are relevant to the treatment of pregnant women with multiple sclerosis. Interferon beta is used to treat multiple sclerosis, also called MS, a chronic neurological condition that affects the brain and the spinal cord. MS is generally diagnosed during reproductive age. Neurologists managing MS need information about the safety of disease modifying treatments before and during pregnancy. Interferon beta is effective at reducing relapse rates for MS. Therefore, allowing women to continue disease modifying treatment up to and in pregnancy reduces the risk of disease activity and disability. However, this must be considered alongside the safety of the baby. This study was requested by the European Medicines Agency so that we could learn more about the risks associated with interferon beta during pregnancy and how we can advise clinicians and patients appropriately about its use. The aim of the study was to estimate the frequency of adverse pregnancy outcomes in women with MS who were treated with interferon beta and this frequency was then compared to pregnancy outcomes in women with MS who did not receive disease modifying treatment. So this was a cohort study that used prospectively recorded data from national registers in Finland and Sweden for the period 1996 to 2014 in Finland and 2005 to 2014 in Sweden. Women prescribed interferon beta and no other medications for MS six months before or during pregnancy were compared with women who also had MS who did not receive any disease modifying treatment. The use of disease modifying treatment was identified by pharmacy dispensing data. We used a composite measure of serious adverse pregnancy outcomes, including elective termination of pregnancy due to fetal anomaly, known as TOPFA, major congenital anomaly called MCA in both live births and stillbirths. This figure describes the study population. There were 2,831 pregnancy events. Of these, 2,327 were live births, 291 spontaneous abortions, 127 elective terminations, 74 ectopic pregnancies, and 12 stillbirths. The main results were created using a form of regression analysis to produce relative risks. We could take potential confounding factors into account, such as time since MS diagnosis, mother's age, number of previous pregnancies and other treatments to ensure associations with interferon beta exposure are not due to other influences on both treatment decisions and pregnancy outcome. There are a few potential limitations. The medication data were provided by pharmacy, so we know the prescriptions were collected, but not if all of the women actually took the medication. In some instances also, for example, data on elective termination was not available in Sweden. And spontaneous abortions could only be identified when they occurred in hospital, likely leading to an underestimate. However, this underestimation is very likely comparable between those treated or untreated with interferon beta. So we believe the results are reliable and this landmark study provides further important evidence to support the safety profile of interferon beta. In total, we looked at outcomes from 2,831 pregnancies in 1,009 183 women with MS. This included 797 pregnancies with interferon beta exposure, 
1,647 pregnancies without any exposure to disease-modifying treatment, and 387 pregnancies where the women were exposed to interferon beta in addition or exclusively to other disease-modifying treatments. The data show that 2.2 of the interferon percent of the interferon-exposed women and 4% of the unexposed women had serious adverse pregnancy outcomes. Major congenital abnormalities were present in 1.8 of the live births exposed to different beta, in 3.3% for those not exposed to any MS drug. This difference, however, was not statistically significant between the exposure and the comparison group. There was no statistical dif difference in the number of spontaneous abortions, ectopic pregnancies, or elective termination between the groups. Women with MS exposed to interferon beta did, did appear more likely to terminate pregnancy for other reasons compared to the women not exposed to interferon beta. The prevalence of stillbirth was 0.3% in interferon beta exposed group compared to 0.6% for the unexposed group. Again, this was not statistically significant between the cohorts. The data show the same results when further adjusted statistical analyses were carried out, suggesting that the results are reliable and not influenced by factors other than exposure to interferon beta. For example, there were no differences in age, duration of MS treatment, or time since MS diagnosis between the two groups of women. Our study did not show any increase in the prevalence of adverse pregnancy outcomes in women with MS who were exposed to different beta compared to women who were not exposed to any disease modifying treatment. This is the first large population-based cohort study to investigate pregnancy outcomes in women with MS treated with interferon beta. The study design allowed comparison of outcomes with or without interferon beta use with adequate statistical power. The results showed that there is no evidence of increased risk of adverse pregnancy outcomes, major congenital anomalies, spontaneous abortion, ectopic pregnancy, stillbirth, or termination of pregnancy for fetal anomalies in women with MS who were exposed to interferon beta during pregnancy compared to those with no exposure to disease-modifying therapies. Use of data from the national registers of Finland and Sweden means that our results are relevant for the general population of women with MS rather than for just small selected groups of individuals. So our work provides evidence that interferon beta can be used in women with MS until start of pregnancy and possibly throughout pregnancy when clinically needed. Most importantly, this work led to a change in the label for interferon beta use in the European Union when clinically needed. This provides women with a safe, effective way to manage MS up to and throughout pregnancy. Thank you.